Hey folks, you know, as uh, things kind of slow down a bit during this odd period, um, and it's not been that slow, I mean, I'm, I'm just about out of guitars and waiting for a new stock to come in. Um, you know, I've been thinking about things to, to talk about on this um, channel that are not just product updates and reviews and one thing that's been on my mind lately is um, the fact that there are a lot of passionate guitar players out there really passionate and opinionated um, guitar players that will fight their corner on every single uh, guitar related issue and they know um, a brief history of the electric and acoustic guitar that goes back to um, early 20th century guitar making. And they can tell you all about Leo Fender and Gibson and uh, D'Angelico, Guild, Gretsch, all those things, uh, Martin, Taylor. But that's where their history of guitar seems to begin. Uh, and I'm wondering why that is. Um, I'm wondering why more guitarists aren't curious about the history of gu guitar beyond or before the 20th century. Um, basically, the guitar goes back to uh, Islamic, um, Arabic roots, particularly when um, the Moors conquered Spain in the late Middle Ages um, and uh, brought with them a number of instruments including the oud which influenced the lute uh, and also the uh, chitara or the gitern um, became popular uh, in that exchange and we owe a lot to Moorish uh, southern Spain actually because um, one of the reasons why the Renaissance happened is we had lost our roots to classical education and writing um, during the what we call the Dark Ages, where we lived principally under the church's uh, influence. Uh, we had lost Plato, Aristotle, um, all of the Greek and Roman thinkers. Uh, a lot of it had been buried and the reason why it became prevalent again and there was such a flowering of classical information which then spawned a whole new uh, period of um, uh, classically influenced uh, writers, painters, poets, musicians uh, is because um, the Moors had preserved those uh, writings of antiquity, not just uh, writings, but also mathematical and scientific principles, and taught them back uh, when they um, conquered Spain. And they took root, and there was a great reflowering. Uh, so we actually owe the um, early Islamic uh, Arabic cultures quite a bit, us European founded peoples. Um, you know, we tend to think of Islam as being uh, fundamentalist, but that's that's just like with Christianity. That's a nine, late nineteenth century, early twentieth century development. Uh, before the the uh, uh, fundamentalist surge in both religions, um, you know, uh, there was quite a propensity for science and for art and for preserving writings and um, various bits of culture, even outside of the church. I mean, some of the great uh, abbeys and um, monasteries preserved uh, secular writings as well as sacred writings. And it's the same with the uh, early Islamic um, culture as well. So we get our fretted string instruments via ancient Persia um, through the uh, early, uh, sorry, the, the, yeah, the early Islamic Arab culture that is then brought to Southern Europe and then just sort of flourishes through Europe. And early forms of the guitar, 
either the Gitarn in uh, Northern Europe or the Chitara in, in Southern Europe really were popular, not just as salon instruments, but also uh, there was a quite a developed um, literature for those players. Um, uh, and they were taken seriously to a point. I mean, um, yeah, the really elite uh, music schools didn't see uh, early forms of guitar um, as being quite up there with uh, playing the viol or, or the violin family uh, or woodwinds um, uh, or didn't include them in orchestral music and a lot of um, chamber music as well. But they did have little flourishing um, enclaves and very serious players, including people like Paganini, uh, who brought it, the guitar to uh, some level of popularity. And then we get the four-string vihuela, um, which is tuned inside out, sort of like a ukulele, uh, with courses, with double strings. I think uh, four courses in most vihuelas until they added a course and that becomes, of course, the Baroque guitar. And thankfully, there's now an early music movement and all kinds of people playing these instruments and going back to forgotten pieces and composers uh, and method manuals, and there are literally hundreds of them throughout these periods um, from the 17th, late 16th, 17th, and 18th century uh, where these two instruments um, uh, took root and had their own traditions sort of side by side. Eventually the Baroque guitar sort of uh, edges out the smaller vihuela uh, instrument. Um, and various makers then begin to um, experiment with the guitar in order to make it louder so that it can be played in an ensemble. The reason why the guitar is a solo instrument in its early development is because it's so quiet. Uh, you certainly couldn't play one of those early guitars with an orchestra. You just wouldn't be able to hear them. So the reason why we went from a guitar shaped like this, um, the Baroque guitar, which is a, a very a thin waisted, lighter uh, instrument with uh, gut frets rather than metal frets uh, and courses of strings except for the uh, top string which would be the uh, the melody string as they called it which was a single string uh, various makers then uh, played with all kinds of ideas construction ideas until we get to Torres uh, in the 18th century who not right away. It's not like he, he discovered or, or um, invented the modern classical guitar right away. He went through various uh, renditions of ideas. Eventually made the guitar bigger with a bigger soundboard so that it would vibrate more and push out more sound. Removed the uh, three-dimensional uh, rosette that was sort of lute-like uh, with its cross patterns and often goat skin. Um, sort of uh, sound hole uh, and opened up the sound hole to, to, to give you more power and more direct sound. Got rid of the courses and uh, used single strings. Of course, the uh, technology in producing strings surged so we could now use single strings. They could project more. They had more articulation, more definition in sound. Um, and then uh, what he did uh, was to add a f uh, strutting pattern, which is the uh, modern fan fret strutting pattern, which allowed them to ma build bigger, more powerful guitars that could project more sound and then, then could be played in an ensemble. And later, as with the Concerto Danues uh, and other pieces of uh, guitar orchestral music, uh, it could be played in large ensembles like an orchestra uh, and this is all really really fascinating of course the all the great uh, luthiers uh, of the Spanish guitar traditions flowered in this period uh, after Torres or even a little bit before him actually they were making the smaller instruments and they, then they transitioned and it wasn't just Torres there were others as well the uh, the great houses of Rodrigo and Ramirez 
um, uh, which are still going, uh, were born of this period as well. And they also influenced with a lot of different models and technological changes, um, you know, brought about uh, uh, more bigger and more powerful instruments that could be soloist instruments. Of course, the adding of the machined gear uh, helped with tuning issues. Uh, those of you who've played a lute uh, or a Baroque guitar, you'll know that they are friction pegs like violin pegs. Um, and if they're made well, if they're cut uh, well and doweled well, uh, and they fit into the peg holes well, you can have a stable tuned instrument. However, uh, you spend a lot more time tuning, and it's those incremental uh, shifts in tuning that become difficult uh, with friction pegs. Uh, so the ad addition of um, gear tuners uh, sort of made the guitar more stable, and the, the guitar player then could spend less time tuning his instrument and more time playing it. Um, and every time I get my lute out, I'm, I'm reminded of that. Uh, you spend a lot of time getting it in tune. Um, so, you know, these, these wonderful uh, uh, transitions and changes and gradations of guitar making gave us some absolutely fantastic music. Uh, and there are, there's now a whole realm of early music enthusiasts and, and experts and players that are playing uh, things like Robert de Vizzi, you know, from the uh, 17th century, uh, or Corbetta, some of the early um, composers for the smaller guitars are now being, their works are being trolled, transcribed, and brought back and, and played in concerts and recorded, whether on early instrument in, uh, um, replications or uh, on the modern guitar. Um, they're, they're sort of two traditions side by side. And it's really flowered in recent years. And if you just go on YouTube, you can spend the whole evening, as I do, uh, watching um, uh, modern Baroque guitar players or modern vihuela players exploring, you know, two or three centuries of guitar music. Uh, the great Julian Bream, who is one of my favorites uh, of 20th century players. Um, after Segovia, of course, brought forward uh, music by doing a complete documentary on Spanish guitar music, starting with the four-string vihuela, working through the Baroque um, guitar tradition to the first Torres guitars and into the modern uh, guitar repertoire. Uh, you know, created a, a, I think it's a two-hour special uh, of the history of the guitar. And before people like him and John Williams and uh, David Russell, um, you know, uh, Ida Presti, you know, all the great guitarists of the 20th century, the guitar was relatively unknown and underrated and underrepresented uh, with repertoire. And because of these pioneers uh, from last century, we, ne we now have quite a burgeoning tradition. And of course, they all all those great guitarists after Segovia, the next generation after Segovia, they followed his lead in getting uh, all the contemporary composers to write and uh, for the guitar and take it seriously. So we, we owe them a lot, and there's such a rich history for this instrument um, before the first electric guitars were ever made, and of course, right after. And you know, I, I hope that more and more guitar players contemporary guitar players explore some of that history um, and become enamored by it uh, because it's a really rich tradition that's becoming richer by the day. Anyway, enough of my waffle. I just thought it was interesting to uh, bring to the fore and I hope that uh, there's something uh, edifying in what I had to say. All right, folks, take care. See you next time.